as we have seen that how these array methods are helpful uh, for making use of the unpacked array types. It may be a fixed or it may be dynamic or a queue or associative. So, with the help of array reduction method or array locator methods or array sorting and ordering, we have seen the example how it is uh, handling the complexity while writing the system very log. So, the designer can handle the complex design in an efficient way with the help of uh, these methods whatever we have just considered uh, just as array reduction or a locator or sorting and ordering with the help of monitor block and those values predict predicted value will be stored in the scoreboard and those values are mapped with the or matched with the uh, output which is obtained from the design and the test. So, if there is a match we say that there is no bugs in the design, if there is a mismatch we can say that there are bugs then that need to be handled. So, with the help of this array methods whatever we have uh, considered till now, it will help, help us to code every block or every test component in the test bench. So, just for an example a scoreboard it is written using the class with the help of array locator methods. So, just for an example it defines the packet structure then creates a scoreboard made from the queue of these structures. So, we will be declaring that every component in the test bench with the help of structure or a class and we will try to define how exactly the interconnection between those need to be happened. Again we can make use of the check underscore address function. So, where it look up the address in the scoreboard and find underscore index method it returns an integer type of q and if q is empty so that is size is equal to 0 no match found and if it is match if that indicates size is equal to 1. So, with the help of this different components I mean system Verilog arrays with the array methods what we have discussed it is easy for us to uh, write the environment verification environment uh, with the help of system very low. If the queue has multiple members that is size is greater than 1, there are multiple packets in the scoreboard whose address matches the requested one. So, based on that we will just see that how it can be uh, where system very low can be used uh, for handling the complex design and basically for the verification environment. So, let us consider the choosing a uh, storage type what type of uh, uh, flexibility we can have with respect to the whatever the arrays we have just considered. So, choosing the right storage type based on the flexibility, memory, usage, speed and sorting we will just see that how uh, which one is better way. With respect to flexibility use a fixed size or a dynamic array if it is accessed with the consecutive positive integer uh, indexes with a 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on and choose a fixed array if at all we know the dimension of the array if not it is better to go for the dynamic array. And associative arrays can also be passed regardless of the size and it can be used to model the content addressable memory cam also. And queues are good way to store values when the number of elements grows and shrinks a lot during the simulation. There is a variation then it is better to go for queues. It may be it may happen with the addition or it may happen with the deletion. So, better to go with the queues. So, with respect to memory usage as we can say that better to go for only two state element. So, logic 0 and logic 1. So, specifically we have a data type bit. So, it will not assign a memory location for high impedance of the unknown value. So, use two state element to reduce the simulation memory and choose the data size uh, that are multiple of 32 bit to avoid the wastage of space. Packed arrays can also help conserve memory because it takes the consecutive memory uh, if at all we declare the array as packed array. For arrays that hold up to a thousand elements the type of array that you choose does not make much difference, but still we have a lot many uh, memory location or a million of active elements it is better to go for the dynamic or the associative. So, queues are slightly less efficient because we require over there a pointer additional pointer which is required and if the data set grows and shrinks it is better to uh, store it in, in the dynamic memory and modeling memory is larger than a few megabytes better to go for associative memory and note that each element in the associative array can take several times more memory than the fixed side or a dynamic memory. 
So, there may be a overhead with respect to pointer also, it is that is why the associative arrays are less efficient as compared to the other type of arrays which we have discussed. So, with respect to speed, uh, choose an array type based on how many times it is accessed per clock cycle. So, that is what with respect to speed also when we look for, uh, for only a few reads and writes use any type does not matter. But if you use an array more often, its size and type matters. So, normal operation of course, we do not mind actually, but when we are making use more often, then we have to choose with respect to its size and type also matters. So, if it is a fixed size and dynamic arrays are stored in a consecutive memory and so any element can found in the same amount of time regardless of the time, uh, regardless of the array size because it is accessing with the continuous memory. Queues have almost the same access time as a fixed size or a dynamic array for read and write operation, only thing is we need a pointer over there. So, the first and the last element can be pushed and popped with almost no overheads of course, inserting and removing element in the middle requires many elements to be shifted up or down. So, if at all it is at the center of the queue, then there may be a chances of we need to move the data element and we need to access the particular element in the array. When reading and writing associative arrays, the simulator must search for the element in the memory. So, index is important over there as we have seen that we have to specify that proper indexing uh, in order to access the corresponding memory location. The associative uh, array is much faster in accessing any given element uh, with respect to a given index. When done with an element, use delete to remove it from the associative array. So, we can make use of the uh, delete method if at all we are not using so that the memory can be uh, made it free. So, sorting it out, uh, system Verilog can sort any single dimension as we have seen that it may be a higher order minimum to max or max to minimum value and it can be shuffled also with the array methods. And if the values are received at all once, choose a fixed size or a dynamic array so that you can allocate the array once. If the data slowly dribbles in, choose a queue as adding new element to the head or tail is very efficient. So, based on certain um, uh, analysis, it is just mentioning that these different types of arrays can be used for the purpose, but entirely it is depending upon how exactly the designer is looking for and what kind of uh, operations he is performing based on the design which he is handling. So, you can suitably think of uh, which type of array he can dis, uh, decide for his operations. So, if you have a unique and non-contiguous value, uh, store them in an associative array by using them as an as index. Using the routines first, next, previous search an associative array for a value and find successive values. So, these are the certain guidelines or uh, the understanding of different values which are mentioned, but exactly it happens with the design, how the designer is looking for and probably he has to look for which way he at all he declare an array, whether it is associative array or it may be a queue or it may be a dynamic. So, he has to uh, just think it of that which is suitable for his requirement. So, selecting or choosing the best data structure, uh, there are some suggestions on choosing the data structure, it depends upon certain uh, properties. So, network packets if at all we consider. So, with respect to property, we have fixed size accessed sequentially. So, use a fixed size or a dynamic array for a fixed or a variable size packets. So, if it is a scoreboard of expected value, then you have to see that uh, use a queue since continually adding and deleting can happen with respect to queue in a efficient way. So, if your transaction is filled with the random values, you can just push them into a queue and search for a unique values. And if the scoreboard may have the hundreds of element and you are often inserting and deleting them uh, from the middle, then it is better to go for the associative array, it may be a faster. Sorted structures, so use the key if the data comes out in a predictable order or an associative array if the order is unspecified. Depending upon scenario, we can uh, choose which one, which way is better. If the scoreboard never needs to be searched just store the expected value in the mailbox and continue. 
So, modeling a very large memory is greater than a million entries. If you do not need every location, use the associative memory. If you do need every location, try to different approach when you do not need so much live data. So, make sure that you are using the two state values packed into 32 bits so that you can uh, use the memory space. And then depending upon scenario, you just make sure that how the associative arrays are used if there as such with respect to Q and the associative, you need to see that how efficiently you are making use of those arrays. So, there are certain limitation with respect to the overhead pointer and how to search in element in the memory. So, these are the uh, uh, points which the designer has to look for when he is making use of the available array technique in the system very long. Suppose we wanted to create a new type. So, we will make use of type def here. So, that help us to create and it simplifies the uh, de definition of the whatever the task we are performing here. So, syntax which we are referring is type def is a keyword. So, you need to specify what type of uh, data type we are using and the size and what is the type name. Just for an example, we have creating the logic gate here that is the name of the uh, um, type data type. So, which is of logic and size is of A type. So, when I declare type def of logic 7 down to 0 logic gate means logic gate is of logic type of 8 bit. So, directly I can make use of logic gate is the keyword and ABC. So, ABC is the value of logic type and which is of 8 bit. So, no need to define, once it is defined I can wherever it is required to have a 8 bit data with logic type I can just write a logic 8. And you can append uh, the how many elements you wanted. So, extra element if at all you are adding it. So, as we considered underscore array of say 4. So, that indicates that 4, array, four elements need to be added in the array whatever we have declared here. So, which is of logic type 8 bit and the ABC whatever we have declared here is underscore array ABC. The 4 elements values are declared as 1, 2, 3, 4. So, that means we wanted to assign the values for a logic 8 array which is of 8 bit those values are hexa number 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, user defined structures. So, we can make use of the struct uh, in the very uh, system very log uh, that was not there in the very log as we have considered. So, biggest limitation of very log is the lack of the data structure that was introduced in the system very log. So, the statement which we are using here is the struct here. So, with the help of struct it can handle the uh, efficiently. So, we will write the class for every test component, it may be a scoreboard or it may be a transaction or it may be a agent or a generator or it may be a driver. So, a struct just group the data fields together and if you want to model a complex data type, uh, so just for an example, a pixel in the design code, so that can be put into the structure. So, we will just define the struct bit of 8 bit RGB and the pixel. So, it creates a single pixel that is with the 8 bit with the values are RGB that we can make use of here with the help of pixel underscore S. So, whenever we use the pixel underscore S, it helps to easier to uh, spot the user defined types and it can be accessed easily process of sharing or reusing the code becomes easy. So, just we can refer whatever the name we are assigning is the underscore S, yes, it will help us to access the structure uh, very efficiently in the code. So, just for an example, if at all we declare type def struct which is of integer A, byte of B, short int that is C and again D is of integer. So, we will define that is my underscore struct underscore S. Yes. So, whenever I refer this my underscore struct underscore S yes of ST, so, I will be declaring uh, the int of 32 bit uh, the value int is integer of 32 as the default. So, the value is something it is written as a a a uh, all the values are a and for the byte in since it is a 8 bit the value is b b and short int uh, the value is c c and again int the value are d d. So, if at all you are printing just str string with our st dot a 
So, that is what the structure we have defined over here that is uh, name with this. So, I can directly access the structure what we have de defined here. So, it is going to print every value that is A, 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 A and B, B, C, C and D, D, D. So, we can handle with, uh, we can assign multiple values to the structure just like an it may be array either in the declaration or in the procedure assignment. So, union also works uh, as similar to the uh, struct what we have just considered. So, only the main difference here is each of the different members of the structure allocated their own memory space and we can assign a value to each of the different members in the structure independently. If it is a union, so each of the different memories of a union use a shared memory location. So, when we write the data uh, to one of the members in the union, all other members will be assigned to that value. So, it is as both are uh, same. So, for structure under S yes, we will use for union, we will make use of the under U underscore U. So, there are uh, different I mean type conversions which are used. Basically, they are used for the conversion uh, different data types. So, from one to the other one. So, there may be a static cast or it may be a dynamic cast. So, during the value or a variable assignment to a particular value, it will just convert one type to the other one. So, just we will see that int and real with a static cast. So, just for an example, we have declared uh, real and integer with r underscore a and i underscore a. So, if at all a real value you wanted to multiply 2.1 into 3.2, so multiplication is happening with the real numbers. And if you consider i of a with integer 2.1 into 3.2, so we can make use of the type conversion. So, as we can see that here, so i of a int of tick r comma a. So, it is going to display you that what is the real value and what is the int value. So, if it is a real value, you can see that it is going to be considered as 6.72000. So, the int value is nothing but it will round off to 7. So, there is a type conversion we can make use of to convert the data types from real to int or uh, other way data types can be converted each other. So, for the dynamic cost, we will go for a dollar cost. Um, uh, that allows to check out check for out of bounds values. So, there are some streaming operators which are used here that is with respect to the symbol which we have considered here. This greater than operator streams data from left to right and uh, the less than whatever we have here uh, that streams from right to left. So, just uh, consider an example uh, the with the streaming operators. So, as we can see that um, we just considered h is of int type and b is of bit type of a, uh, 8 bit. Similarly, we have an array g and j, the values are a, b, c, d. So, h, so it is from right to uh, say left to right. So, what we have left to right that is a, b, c, d. So, that is what we have considered with respect to h number or hexa number. So, initially we have a, b, c, d. a is in the sense we have 1, 0, 1, 0 and b is nothing but 1 0 1 1 and c is nothing but 1 1 0 0 and d is nothing but 1 1 0 1. So, h is equal to now right to left when I move right to left what is happening 1 0 1 1 reverse the bit. So, what we have this is what the initial value a b c d which is given. Now, what we have when I reverse it so, it will be considered as, as 1011, then anyway it is assigned with 00 over here. So, it will be 0, next 0011 that is nothing but 3, so we have 0 here that is 0, next 1101 that is nothing but D here, so this 0 as it is, next we have 0101 that is 5 again 0. That means right to left also it will read and from bit streams are helping us to read the bit wise from right to left and left to right. So, it reads from right to left as we just consider we are reading like this. So, every bit is considered this and from again uh, when you consider uh, with the reverse order that is from again right to left when I consider but byte wise. So, if I read that is initially it was A, B, C, D. Now, it will read first D, next 
C, next B, next A. That is from top to bottom. Uh, top to bottom was done. Now it will read in this way because it is moving from right to left. That is what we have just seen here. That is 0 D, 0 C, 0 B, 0 A unpacked into array. Next we have right to left that is 8 bit 0 0 1 1 0 1 0 0. So, if you read that way for a given expression, so what happens it will become 1 0 1 0 1 1 0 0. So, from right to left again it is right to left, but we have 4 here 4 a tick 4 b 0 0 1 1 and 0 1 0 1 1. So, it is initialized with the 4 value that is 1 0 1 0 0 only 4 values again we have 0 0 1 1 that is nibble we have de declared here that is a 4. So, that means with the help of basic streaming operators. So, we will just see that how the data can be read out and type conversers are basically used for conversion of one type to the uh, one uh, data type to the other one. So, just considering an example uh, how the conversion between queues with the streaming operator helps here. So, we have a bit type 16 tick h 1 2 3 4 and 16 tick h 5 6 7 8 and we have declared a queue as w q and b q. So, convert word array to byte. So, if at all we use right to uh, left to right here w q. So, it will read in terms of byte as 2 to 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 separately. And the other way if at all we consider here we have byte to word. So, 98, 76, 54 and 32 is given. So, word in the sense it will take 2 to 98, 76, 54 and 32. Similarly, we can consider with respect to a given structure value whatever we have declared here struct integer whatever the same example with the same values which we have stored in a b c d. So, when you are converting this structure to a byte value. So, structure whatever we have with respect to 32 bit here. So, since it is a byte it will take only 2 2 bit a a b b c all will be of distributed with respect to byte. And from byte to an array to a structure. So, what we have again we need to consider so, from the uh, value what uh, we have 1 0 1 0 uh, all values you need to distribute and check it out in terms of binary what values we are getting a tick h 1 1 2 2 3 3 4 4 it will be uh, every time it is going to be same value with the double value. So, if it is from right, left to right of b value what we just consider it is going to print out uh, the same value 1 1 2 2 3 3 4 because we are converting into a corresponding st that is a structure which is of 32 bit. So, we can write uh, that way. So, that means with the help of uh, streaming structure and uh, uh, other op streaming operators we can handle the conversion between one type to the other type. So, finally, we have a enumerated type uh, the type which we create will have a list of valid val values which it can take explicitly uh, list the valued uh, values which the type can take when we create it. So, we can make use of the add, move, uh, rotate w and other values with the help of uh, enumerated type. So, we will just consider an example if at all we declare enum red, blue, green which is of color type. So, then we can make use of uh, in the example as we can see here. So, it is def defined enum as I initial decode and idle three states. So, these are the values which we can consider for the FSM uh, state machine 0 1 2 and uh, present state and next state we can declare here. So, under the initial block. So, depending upon the present state if at all it is at the ideal the next state will be initialized from the initial next state will be decode. So, default it next state will be ideal. So, we can uh, make use of the display uh, that is dollar display next state is what is the next state from the corresponding name. So, n state that is the next state what we are using dot name. So, it is going to uh, uh, give us from one state to the other state if at all it is idle is considered as state 2 initial is state 0 and default it will go to the idle state. 
So, we can make use of uh, enum uh, type to declare uh, the uh, our own data types and uh, effectively we can uh, write depending upon how FSM is coded for a particular design. So, usually we should make uh, a note here that the default value of 0 for initial is uh, 0 and make sure that whenever we declare enum initial decode is equal to 2 ideal. So, this is how we and FSM type of e we whenever we are using. So, that is what we need to consider here is uh, the use uh, careful when assigning the value to the enumerated constant because the default value of an int is 0. We should not assign any value as initial values as it is considered here. So, the first is equal to 1 it is considered here uh, that may not be the incorrect value. So, make sure that the first value default value is considered as 0. The position is initialized to 0 which is not a legal uh, the whatever we have variable we have used here ordinarily underscore e variable. So, it is better to initialize with a 0 and continue for the first and second that we should keep in mind whenever we are making use of the enumerated type. So, the system very law provides certain functions uh, for stepping through the enumerated types. So, the first uh, bracket that returns the first member of the enumeration, similarly last it returns the last member of the enumeration. Similarly, next uh, returns the next element, but capital N it returns the nth element uh, that is a uh, which is there in the uh, specified enumerated element. So, previous and previous when. So, previous bracket returns the previous element of the enumeration, wherein capital N returns the nth previous element. The functions next and previous wrap around when they reach the beginning or end of the enumeration. So, accordingly we have to make use of that. Uh, these uh, functions uh, along with the enumerate, enumerated types uh, to access the particular element in the given structure. So, the finally, we can say that uh, constant, there are several constant of the types of constant in this system very log. So, the classic very log way to create the constant is with the macro. So, we will just write a constant byte colon. So, represent. So, the value of colon is initialized when the initial block is entered. So, this is how uh, we can make use of uh, different types of uh, arrays, uh, different uh, types of data types which we can use in the system Verilog. So, entirely as we can see that um, when we uh, Verilog it is suitable for writing the main design digital design. So, when the verification comes into picture, so we have seen that what are the complexity of the verification engineer he has to see because everybody treats uh, the design specification on their own way. So, handling with the different test benches, but as a standard verification engineer, he has to build a environment in such a way that there will not be any bugs. So, if there is a problem really in the design, so it should be come out as bugs, then the design can be handled in an efficient way. That means, ultimate aim of the verification engineer is to see that there will is not any bugs in the design. But in order to create an environment to get the efficient result, so that means if there is a real bug in the design, but during the verification it has to be observed at the output that is what the intention of the verification engineer. So, uh, bugs should not be uh, uh, escaped during the verification process, otherwise what happens the next stage is nothing but the manufacturing. So, those bugs are encountered in the manufacturing process ultimately with the yield of the product is going to be reduced. So, we will get the bad chips. So, that is why it as a verification engineer, he has to create an environment in such a way that whatever the RTL designer might have written the code that should be verified in a efficient way. That is the purpose the it should be created that means, the environment should be created. So, we should produce the test vector in such a way that it will has to look for the different combination or a random sequence in such a way that there may be a possibility that there may go wrong in the design process. So, that should be observed. So, that is why we need to create a very efficient, very efficient uh, verification environment. So, in order to handle that verification environment, we have to build certain test components 
those components need to be written using the system verilog hence we require a system verilog for the verification purpose so in order to handle the complex design the verification alone may not be supporting with the limited data types and whatever the limitations we have with respect to the type conversion or the memory allocation or the arrays need to be handled so there are different components as we can see that the scoreboard and other transactions are usually written using the structural modeling or a class where we need to define so under such condition probably we require a efficient way of handling the data path and other kind of arrays and other uh, different way of uh, writing the model for the verification that is the purpose uh, the system verilog was introduced to handle the verification environment efficiently so whatever the different types of data paths apart from the verification we have seen that is helpful and with respect to the arrays as we have seen that it may be a fixed or it may be a dynamic so if at all right now the designer does not know what is the dimension of the array then probably he can go for the dynamic so that he can use the memory location efficiently so there may be a possibility that we can i can define packed and unpacked so if we have a large memory location that need to be handled then it is better to go for associative and if at all it is required to add the element or remove the element it is better to go for the queues so those opportunities are available in the system verilog so that efficiently we can handle the design as well as the verification environment apart from that we can create our own data type by typing the type def that also helps there are different methodologies or a methods which are used so that we can handle the different arrays it may be a fixed or a dynamic or it may be an associative or a queue can be handled with those array methods and there are some constant uh, constant which we can handle with this and enumerated type it may be a struct or it may be a union what we can consider this so these are the uh, additional modification uh, that uh, the system verilog has those these are helping the verification engineer to model the test bench in a efficient way so ultimately we can conclude with respect to this uh, model which consist of verification guidelines and process and what are the components which are involved for the verification environment and how those blocks can be written using the system verilog and in order to make use of the system verilog what are the additional features which are added apart from the verilog as we have seen that so conclusion of the module 3 is nothing but the system verilog provides a many new data types and structures to create a high level test benches without having to worry about the bit level representation so queues work well for creating a scoreboards for which constantly need to add and remove and dynamic arrays allow to choose any array and size at run time for a maximum test bench flexibility associative arrays are used for sparse memories and some scoreboards with a single index and finally enumerated types make your code easier to read and write by creating the groups of named constants so this is regarding the uh, verification guidelines and verification process and what are the different types of data what are the different data types which are used in the system verilog so this is topic helps you to write the verification environment uh, using the system verilog and probably you are going to write the uh, model or a test bench uh, as a verification environment to verify the design whatever the design you have written instead of using verilog now you can go for a system verilog for verification of the uh, digital system design which is designed by the rtl engineers